into this underground world and the message it's sending out, Chris? Well, it is a message that has hit the mainstream, and perhaps we should all be listening. That same anger and frustration very clearly raised its head this summer during a concert in San Bernardino County, a concert that could be considered a microcosm of what punk has become. In what is called the pit. Tense looking punks and skinheads circle. The hostility is building. Who's outnumbered here? Not the punkers today. Punk rock bands prime and sometimes taunt the crowd. You guys are weak. What's up, man? Come on, you guys. Skinheads, mohawk scalps, and punk dyed hairdos mixed with fresh faced teenagers. It's the punk generation. It's about being able to say what you don't like about society, what you like yeah. about life. More than 20 punk rock bands are on the bill. An estimated 11,000 punk fans in the crowd, the largest ever in Southern California. It's not about going here. It's not about anything. It's just about having fun. That's it. That's all everyone comes out here to do, dude. But here in the pit, during a breakout of slam dancing, it is a peculiar form of fun. Get hurt! 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 Get for many here, that is the drill. Add to this a sweltering 100 degree temperature with concession stands selling $6 beers, $3 Cokes, and $2 cups of water. So it's turn to right, I think. By mid-afternoon, an angry row of middle fingers point toward the sky. Hey, up. A defiant dab of saliva finds a convenient target. Both. Gestures showing the screw you attitude embraced by so many punks. The bands want you to say you to them. The bands want you to give you the attitude that you're giving them. That's what they want. A punk singer spits toward the crowd. Some spit back. In between, a row of pump private security guards line the stage. You spit on the security guards, you get a pop on the face, darling. Some sheriff's deputies huddle nearby. The stage barricade gets a mean shaking, and the crowd gets its first warning. If you guys stop the barricade, they will shut the show down. Bodies are lifted over punk fan heads in a concert ritual called crowd surfing. Older punks and young ones overflow into the security area. The scene gets crazier as the day goes on, the pit pounding to the music. It's an adrenaline rush. It's Great. The sound is aggressive. You gotta get it out. Crowd surfers flood over the barricade. Part of the game, a familiar one at punk concerts, is to get on stage and leap off into the crowd. It's called stage diving. Staff pro security guards have been hired to stop it. The reason we don't want them on stage is because they jump back off. And I think probably 90% of the injuries at festival seating concerts are caused by people jumping off the stage into the audience and you jump on top of people's heads. We're a couple broken necks away from this type of music not touring anymore. Tension heightens between staff pro and punks, and a band called Guttermouth fates the security force. Let's all turn the security, what we think of that? Get some real shots! A steady stream of punks spill over the barricade. Some rush the stage. The Guttermouth lead singer eggs them on. You guys can make it up here. There are many brawls as the security dam begins to break. Punks trickle onto the stage through a swarm of security. Some caught and slammed to the floor. There is now a full-scale battle for the stage. The fun turns to fright for some as the spit and fists continue to fly. There is total chaos. The game now gets security. And word comes to shut down the concert. The band breaks down, and the punkers break into a chant. Angry punks start throwing metal storm sewer grates on stage. To cheers from the crowd, and a massive assault on the stage barricade. 
security guards are forced to retreat. And as the metal grates continue to fly, another band member steps in and pleads for calm. A few stage divers continue to play to the crowd as members of a band called Face to Face argue to go on. Meanwhile, Guttermouth's lead singer is taken to a police van and arrested for inciting a riot. A fire hose ready to use on the crowd is put away. And a half hour after the riot, punk music wails again. Crowd surfers and the barricade back in place. Security out of sight. But it doesn't last long. 20 minutes later, the crowd rushes the stage. A promoter unloads a fire extinguisher to try and scare them all off. And the concert ends four hours early in a ball of smoke. It was just unbelievable. There was so much that was going on, there was no way to control everything. In the end, security blamed the bands for baiting the crowd. It showed the lead singer really controls the crowd and not the security. And punks blame security for overreacting. They just start stopping people for no reason. The bald truth about many punk concerts probably lays here. It is intense because there's a lot of people, but it's usually how they end. They always end up in violence. And if a punk concert does not end in violence, even the most dedicated punk rocker admits there is always at least one fight. Some note the same could be said of a Raiders game. But clearly there is a punk rock dynamic that begs for an explosion. Tomorrow, a look at the ingredients to punk chaos. Yeah, that's a wild scene. It's a wild. All right, we'll see you In tomorrow. In America, every generation has a right to be stupid. <laughs> Joining us now for an inside look at some of that scene in the second part of his series called Punk Invasion. Chris? Well, the punk movement revels in anger and a rejection of the norm. But wrapped up in that package, there is a mixed bag of different skinhead groups, punks, and regular-looking teenagers. All that can be quite confusing. So how's everybody doing rock and roll? The punk rock band here on stage is appropriately called the Vandal. I think there's something wrong with every single person here, including me! In the audience here at the Blockbuster Pavilion in DeVore, there are thousands of punks skinheads, and straight-looking kids. Punk music brought them all here. The music, man. It's like the 60s, but it's the 90s. But in a wide scope of different kinds of punk rock bands, there is constant tension. I went to another Vandal show and two people got stabbed. It was pretty cool. You ain't taking no doubt. And here at the edge of the concert, a white supremacist with a white pride tattoo is attacked by a punk rocker who afterwards breaks loose from sheriff's deputies and takes off running. When deputies later catch up with him, there is a rush from the anti-cop crowd. They're breaking the sprinkler heads off. Metal sprinkler heads become missiles. Deputies become the target. Anything handy becomes a weapon as the simmering mob moves forward. A makeshift spear is launched aimlessly towards the deputies. Deputies who eventually use pepper spray to subdue who they believe are the instigators of this mini riot. At least four are arrested. The crowd goes back to the concert. Each punk fan part of the weave in an odd quilt of clashing groups. Hunger sucks. Oh, that hunger. I'm concerned. White power. Here in Lancaster, these are racist Nazi skinheads, a group the public most readily associates with punk rock music. Neo-Nazi skinheads. It's straight up white power defending our Aryan race. <laughs> you know, what else you both do? In contrast, this group called Sharps, skinheads against racial prejudice, say you are supposed to live in unity with all other races of people. Basically, it's just we're trying to clear, clear that skinheads, all skinheads aren't racist, and the original skinheads weren't racist either. So at punk concerts like this one in Lancaster, the music 
often stops, and the fights begin when non-racist sharps meet Nazis on the slam dance floor. A non-racist skinhead from the San Gabriel Valley, hey, San Gabriel Valley. explains it this way. And there's like Nazis, they always pick on innocent people, so we represent the little people. Yeah, we represent the little people at the same and beat up the Nazis for everyone. But here at this Hollywood club called Natural Fudge, where a sign on the wall reads, slam dancing at your own risk, some even see flaws in the non-racist skinhead approach. The deal with those guys is they want to get their message across, and now they're using violence because they're sick of all the violence that the uh, skinheads have been using. So people are getting fed up. Among them are members of this punk band called Rational Response, who belong to another skinhead faction called Straight Edge. What is straight? It's just not doing drugs and not having sex. It's just being good, you know? <laughs> Here in the foothills of the Santa Clarita Valley, unlike this group, straight edge skins frown on violent slam dancing. I got straight edge. I got straight edge. No beer in my hands, you notice that? <laughs> and surrounded by teenagers trying to tap enjoyment from a beer keg. Freaky right here, baby! Or inhale it from a marijuana pipe. They have no idea what's going on. Straight edge skins pass out lyrics to a song called Crutch, decrying the evils of drugs and booze. You can be their friends and stuff. I just don't like their lifestyle, you know? And, it, and they're all, oh, I smoked a, a bowl last night and stuff. I just want to slap them and go wake up, you know? Grow up. Take it easy, guys! And at this concert in Irvine, Bella, Bella. Orange County skinheads surround a hardcore punk. Holy upset about an incident in the mosh pit. You guys gotta behave yourselves like this A fight that fizzles as quickly as it began illustrates ongoing tension between some skinheads and punk. <laughs> At this club in Hollywood where a wall-sized American flag proudly hangs above the bandstand, those who call themselves traditional skinheads and tend to be more right-wing boast that they are working-class patriots. Well, I believe this is the land of the free, and I'm the brave, I'm going to defend this until the day I die. An attitude not shared by many punks. <laughs> who, with their colorful hairdos, body piercing, and mohawks can sing a more left-wing tune like this all-female punk band called Snapper. It's not like anti-government, like, you know, get a bunch of guns and fight the government or anything. It's just a dream about everyone working together and about the politicians not having all the money in the world so they can do what they want, you know? And alongside punks and skinheads, there are straight-looking punks, even long hair. Punk seems cool, you know. I've been into it for years, you know. Yeah, hold on. I have something to say here. Punk rock is not about long hair, all right? The punk scene picture is not always crystal clear. Everybody has a different view on punk. I think punk is about everybody's different view on things. And it can be very confusing. <laughs> but with the pit as its symbol, it does seem clear that a certain youthful rage runs throughout the entire punk scene. And many punks use that word anarchy to define that rage. It is a theme that pokes through the punk movement as sharply as a nose ring. And we'll have that story tomorrow. And I'll say it again. And in his continuing series called Punk Invasion, Chris Blanchford reports on the rage that runs through this movement. Well, many punks say it is a social movement dedicated to anarchy. They boast a disregard for authority and a do-whatever-you-want attitude. And social movement or not, it all too often comes off just plain mad. This is a typical underground gathering of punk rockers. Most here affiliated with an anti-Nazi group of punks who call themselves the Mental Squad. What's up? Some are skinheads. Yeah! Some are not. Someone torched that thing. And about two dozen of them, much of the time, hang out here in Uptown Whittier. What? 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 Why are you f***ing Tonight, there is trouble. 
The rejects, teenage female enforcers for the mentals, are angry at a 15-year-old runaway who was flirting with their guy. But it is the flirt's friend who gets involved that ends up taking the beating. It is ugly. The victim, bruised and shaken, is left in a fetal position on the sidewalk. Her attackers don't even know her name. But the mental 15-year-old Melanie gets punk admiration for a job well done. I thought it was cool. Punk rock world, you gotta survive out there. And the fight illustrates a hair-trigger anger that runs through much of the punk movement. But for many punk rockers, the anger plays out here in the pit. The music and lyrics often as rough as the action. Casper plays in a band called Teenage Rage. This is generation that gets a lot of rage, and this is where we come and let it all out. All at one time, we let the rage out in the pit. But ultimately, it seems that rage spills outside the pit. Here in Long Beach, which started out as a fundraiser for the baby of a punk who recently died of an aneurysm, eventually brings some uninvited guests. They're hanging outside, causing problems, leaving a mess. Police say the punks have no permit for a band, and illegal drinking has moved outside. The police delegation is not well received. And the pit gets wilder as police slowly begin walking people out. And at one point, rebellious punks lock the cops out. The attitude is familiar even to punks who weren't there. Just doing whatever the f you want, not caring about what anyone says about you or nothing, dude. Just saying, f you. Got authority, huh? Back in Long Beach. Let's go. Break it up. The resistant crowd is finally dispersed without a major incident. It ain't over till there's no government left. But here in Highland Park, the punk spirit is peaking. At a place called the Anarchy Center, fans make it clear the punk movement is not all about music and beer. There's deep social involvement. We're a political group. We, we advocate anarchism and free thought. Here, a punk band called Naked Aggression plays to a racially mixed crowd of punks, skinheads, and straight-looking teens as they struggle in the pit under the banner of anarchy. The message is there are lots of things that are wrong with the society that we're living in that people need to give serious thought to changing and that this is the way this is the way we feel and trying to just make the world a better place by rejecting all the materialistic values that are shoved down our throat from the time we're born. And that, says one anarchist, is what punk music is saying to the youth of America. This punk gathering is eventually shut down by police. I said, more more but other punk and punk bands at an ever-increasing rate are seeming to pop up even fall down without any burning social philosophy at all. A lot of Americans like to drink beer. A lot of Americans like to drink beer, and that's what we stand for, hey, hey. beer drinking. And it is clear the punk movement message can be a little fuzzy. Really, we're about screwing up the government. Um, no, we're not. We're about having fun. We don't, we don't stand for really anything. <laughs> Oh, and with props and gimmicks and body piercings and language that will force your mother out of the room, a lot of punk is just pure shock value in the name of entertainment. Of course, it can be something altogether different. Chris, explain that. Well, for some, punk spells out their own brand of fun. And at the root of the amusement is plenty of beer, shock value, and just plain old entertainment. My name is...
name is Rocket, and I'm Rebel Rebel's number one groupie. Rebel Rebel Rule. This guy has the talent for give me that cigarette. Damn it, give it to me. Putting cigarettes out of his head. I do not do drugs. I get the friend. And it's all a punk put on by a band called Rebel Rebel. The undisputed heavyweight punk rock champions of the world. things and smash things up. We're not new, but Rebel Rebel sets things on fire and throws raw meat at the crowd. We're not original. Rebel Rebel just makes a big mess. We're exciting, that's all that matters, you know? Punk rockers Rebel Rebel are not only here to rock, but to shock. We're going to destroy this stage and then we're going to destroy the rest of America. In line with punk, dark, irreverent humor, but disavowing any lofty punk rock ideals, Rebel Rebel says it's just all entertainment. Everybody's going to make money. Who can have too much money? Everybody wants it, but a lot of people won't admit it. So Rebel Rebel hopes to shock and sing their way into punk fame and fortune. You meet the people, you get adulation. The fame and fortune part, a departure from hardcore punk philosophy. Get away. Get away. Get away. Big enough. A punk philosophy that clings to the underground anti-social attitude. By my appearance, by the way I live, I define myself as separate. Look at me. Separate. But there is no question, punks constantly use shock value that seems to cry for attention. Complete with rings and noses and eyebrows, jeweled tongues, and outlandish hairdo. Shock value is always a go-to card for the punk movement. This is what happens when you drink lots of beer. Before, after, before, after, before, after. Go, 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 go. And along with shock, beer flows down the gullet of the punk movement. So prevalent, this band called Drain Bramage draws a following singing songs about beer. They make no apologies. Drain Bramage is all about drinking beer and having fun. No violence. Drink yourself Drain Bramage to be big and fat and ugly. You're, You're gonna die. Beer. Drain Bramage, attention! Dick Hop! Whoa! At ease! And this punk band called Blue Gun here in Hollywood runs through a series of bizarre looking numbers feeding the audience a TV set to stop one minute and giving them a little fake blood the next. Lead singer Bob Odie says it's all in fun. It's about having fun, uh, making a lot of noise, getting people riled up, try to get a little action going in the crowd. We don't want to bore anybody. We, wanna, we don't want to put anybody to sleep. But at what price comes the fun? Here in Riverside, an elementary school-age kid is held up before the crowd. Wait, in school! The message to a young boy at best is arguably not a good one. Shockingly punk. At worst, before this group of younger punk fans in Riverside, it could be called shameful. For the band called Humble God, the rationalization is one that runs deep and constant through the punk movement. It's just all about pure anarchy. And no rules. Create your own rules. We make up rules as we go. Make up rules as we go. Anything can happen and will happen in the Humble God show. And almost anything does happen at punk rock performances. 
here, a band called Vitamin L unloads a crate of cabbage on the fan. Some toss it back. When it's over, the stage looks like a giant salad bar. And when the vandals perform a number entitled, I Have a Date, there are actually takers in the crowd when this band member acts out the title of his song. And he actually connects. The young candidate selected becomes part of the show, getting more than she bargained for. And so do those who come to see the Aquabats, who with their campy swimwear, poor man's Olympic torch, and other ridiculous prop star. And then there are the Parkers, painted faces, partly hairnet, buxom blondes, and you get the picture. And so does this punk rocker. Just to tell you in the cheek about the world we live in. Just to tell you in the cheek. But the tongue is not the body part most identified with the punk movement. The mohawk or the bald head is probably more of the trademark. Tomorrow, we will focus on those skinheads who say they are misunderstood, but who many blame for the violence in the punk movement. All right, so we'll explain that misunderstanding tomorrow. And there's a vicious rumor going around that John is going to be shaving. The skinheads are chanting their approval. The next song is entitled The Chosen One. The name of the punk rock band on stage is the Tough Skins. As they play, skinheads, some arm in arm, slam dance in the pit below. Another dives off the stage and is carried away by fellow skin. Bald heads bob to the punk rock music. It is skinhead night here at this Hollywood club on the Sunset Strip, and tattooed shoulders bang against each other in the pit. Not really violent, because, I mean, if you look at everybody, it's like it's everybody's aggression. cooperating. You fall down, they pick you up. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's aggression. Yeah, it's, it's just aggressive. Yeah. And near the end of the concert, that aggression explodes. Two battling skinheads go into a clinch across the floor. Stay back, stay back. Before they are pulled apart by security and other skinheads. But it's not over yet, and no one seems surprised. If you're a skinhead, aggression and violence just comes on with, with the book. You just, you expect it. Back here at the club, as angry skinheads continue to scuffle with each other, a guy with long hair makes contact with one of the skinheads. This is trouble. Other skinheads turn on the long hair immediately. Come on, you anxious bastards. Hey. When he breaks loose from the herd of skins and heads for the door, hey, hey, long hair. he is blindsided by skinhead knuckles. And when he hits the floor, is swarmed by bald heads and bare fists. His crime? He, he pushed that guy and it was just, you know, he was just in the wrong place. He's not a skinhead, he's just going to hit him. It wasn't a skinhead, really, you know? It wasn't a skinhead. I mean, you know, if you don't have any respect for somebody, why would you try not to hit him? Meanwhile, out of the sight of our camera, the long hair slips out with bruises and a battered ego. But this Carson skinhead who appeared to throw the first blows of the evening and his original target, a skinhead from a group called Hooligans, are still going at it. It's a common sight. Ever since, I guess, the skinhead cult started, they've been fighting, you know, with each other. This one ends with a skinhead embrace. But skinhead anger continues to simmer until the end. Take it outside, everybody. Take it outside. Good night. Sheriff's deputies arrive to make sure that everyone heads for home. It's all fun and games. We've been at shows that like where like 50 people have been fighting at a, at a time. It's like it's just intense, and like then the cops come, and then people fighting cops. It's just like it's like it's fun. <laughs>
But uh, even within the punk movement, many punkers say the skins can get under your skin. The only real violence you get is from like the skinheads. The center of action at every punk concert is the pit. And at the center of most pits are hardcore skinheads. The Nazi skinheads and people like that that are, you know, going to be out there to cause trouble and fight whoever they can and, you know, rule the pit. Boneheads. Yeah, they're just, they're yeah. just a bunch of idiots. But skinheads are quick to point out most of them are not Nazis. They say they are patriots and they are quick to defend themselves. Skinheads aren't bad people. This is a traditional skinhead band named Revolt. They come from an anti-Nazi skin group called The Family and insist they don't come to concerts looking for trouble. They are just working class youth ready to stand up for themselves. Because a lot of people will like disrespect, you know, like a skin in a certain way or, or um, and then they'll just get beat up for it. <laughs> But other punk fans say there is no excuse for skinhead violence and are troubled by the fact when you see a fight break out, you don't have to look long to spot a skinhead in the middle of it. They got no need to fight. For punk, man, there ain't no skins going on. Dude, racism is f***ed up. F***s everything up for everyone else. But skinheads say, in general, it is really only the Zig Heile Nazi skinheads that are out to hurt people. Skinhead punk bands like Authority, who include a black guitarist, stress racism is not what all skins are about. Being, being white power and being a skinhead is a total different thing, you know, whatever. If they're, if they're racist, that's got nothing to do with being a skinhead. But candid skinheads admit some of their groups are gang-like, love to rough it up in the pit, drink to get drunk, and even fight. And if other punks don't like it, yeah, what the? <laughs> now, several large LA area skinhead groups launched a truce last January to bring peace back to the pit after a rash of beatings and shootings. And in fact, skinheads tell Fox News the level of violence today is not as bad as it used to be. I guess that's encouraging. Hmm, in one way.